What? So welcome back everyone. Kristen here. I'm going to walk out of Zach's scrot shot now. So welcome back everyone. Zach here. Today's video we're going to talk about the saddle stand or saddle rack that I made my wife for Christmas. Though, truth be told, I only finished it about the end of February. A couple months late. Not a big deal. Um, so anyway, uh, this video will be a little different than what you guys are kind of used to on the channel. I did not film myself during any bit of the process that was making this thing. So what I'm going to do is show a couple pictures of gluing up the panels for the sides and the bottom that I have. We'll watch a short animation I put together of how I put you know, everything together and, and how the rack or case is constructed and then take a look at some finished pictures with and without for saddle on it. For anyone who comes across this and wants to try making their own, I do have a link in the description below with plans that explain the uh, dimensions and the type of wood I used and how I put everything together um, and a little bit about my finishing process. So without much more than that, let's get to it. The entire process started with heading to a local sawmill to obtain whatever wood caught my eye that day. I knew I was going to at least purchase some black walnut and ambrosia maple to make a toy chest for my daughter. I bit off a little more than I can chew on that one. I had come up with the idea of making a saddle rack for Kristen's Christmas present only a few days before, and I hadn't decided on what wood I would make it out of. I ended up getting some four-quarter rough sawn white oak boards at the recommendation of the sawmill owner. I had been leaning in that direction already, but his recommendation sealed the deal. After purchasing the lumber, the first step of the building process was to take my four-quarter boards and head to my buddy JRH Woodworking's place to mill them down and process the lumber into something usable. On a side note, if you're looking to have something made, check out his website linked in the description below. He does some really nice cutting boards as well as takes custom requests. We used his DeWalt planer and an antique joiner to process the white oak boards to a hair over 7 eighths of an inch thick. I wanted to keep the boards as thick as possible while making sure they were planed smooth and flat. We then broke them down into rough lengths and split one of the sections in half on his bandsaw to make the slats. After that, it was all on me. Once back at my own house, I used my DeWalt table saw to rip all the boards to the correct width and a hastily built crosscut sled to get them all within a half inch of final dimension. From there, it was pairing up the boards and gluing them together. I borrowed a DeWalt biscuit tool from my dad and put three sets of biscuits in each board. I wasn't really happy with the way this turned out, but I think it was mostly user error for never having done biscuits before. They didn't really help with the fit or alignment, and I don't think I had the right biscuits anyway as they were loose in the grooves the tool cut. I then glued up the bottom panel and the two side panels. I made four pipe clamps for this process and used a ton of smaller clamps I borrowed from my dad. The alignments on my glue ups were a little sketchy, but a bit of hand planing and sanding smoothed them out. Next we went back to the table saw and used the cross cut sled to cut the panel square into length. I then used my miter saw to cut the 45 degree angles on the side panels to make the shape the saddle will rest on. I left the top width of the side panels exactly one slat wide and let the 45 degree angle run out to the sides wherever it naturally ended. Based on my measurements of the saddle, I knew the panel would fit well. I then began by pre-finishing everything before final assembly. This by far took the longest amount of time. I hand sanded the 11 slats, starting at 120 grit and then going to 220 grit. I used a 5 inch orbital sander for the panels starting at an 80 grit because of my misalignment on glue ups before moving to 120 and 220 grits. Everything was then cleaned with a dry cloth and wiped down with some acetone. My finish of choice for this project was three coats of Watco Natural Danish Oil. I allowed at least a day of dry time between coats if not longer. Finally all the pieces were finished with a coat of Minwax finishing paste. I will put a link, I will put links in the description below to any of those products for those of you interested. The last step was assembly. I clamped the sides to the base and began with attaching the slat at the peak of the saddle rack. I pre-drilled the slats and panels for each screw. 
I used number 12 brass screws which were not fully threaded so once the sides were pre-drilled I had to come back and use a larger bit on the slats to deal with the solid part of the shank. I used this same procedure for the rest of the slats starting with the two on the sides before moving on to the slope portions of the rack. I then drilled and attached the base to the sides before, before putting on the final two slats which help hold any tack items in the bottom of the rack. Note my animation shows these last two steps out of order. The order I used seemed to work the best as far as being able to take out any imperfections in either my glue ups with twists or cups or the lengths of my cuts that I made during the entire process. The final step was to put small rubber feet on the bottom panel to keep it from sitting directly on the floor. And that concludes the video on the saddle rack. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, and comment and let me know what you thought or if you guys would have done anything differently with this. So with that, until next time, have a great day.